What's going on everybody? My name is Zach Hartley and welcome back to another weekly watch this video. In this one, I've got two stocks for you that I'm going long on, two stocks for you that I'm going short on, as well as an update on the market conditions. So let's jump right in. Okay, to start us off here, we're going to take a quick look at the NASDAQ. And as you can see, we're trading above our moving averages. We've crossed above previous resistance. We continue to set higher highs. And honestly, this looks like an absolutely amazing chart. We're also seeing the same thing from the S&P 500. Small dips here and there, just small pullbacks before continuing higher. Really nice to see, at least recently. The Dow Jones is a slightly different story as we've seen some more choppy trading over the last, let's call it two to three months here. But overall, we're in a long-term bullish trend, currently trading below our moving averages though, so it is something to keep an eye on. When it comes to the VIX, we are trading at very low levels, which is very, very good to see. And it shows that we're in kind of a strong market right now. When it comes to Bitcoin, we've basically been trading pretty choppy for the last almost four or five months here. You can see we're kind of hovering between 58,000 and 72,000. We did have a nice run up at the beginning of June before basically falling off for the last almost two weeks here. Now, if you're interested in getting started in crypto or opening a wallet for Bitcoin, definitely check out Newton or Coinbase. Both of them are gonna be linked in the description to this video. You do get a sign up bonus as well with Newton. It is $25 when you deposit and trade $100 or more. Now, when it comes to commodities, I like to keep an eye on this just because it gives me an idea of what's happening in the world and can provide some great trading opportunities. West Texas, like crude right now, super interesting. We're in sort of a bearish trend, but we're starting to cross back above our moving averages. It's gonna be really interesting to see what happens over the next few weeks. It does sort of feel like we're at an inflection point where it could go higher, it could go lower, it might even stay trading sideways for a little bit, like what we're seeing with uranium. Uranium went through a massive rise from about $50 to $106, and now it's basically been trading between 85 and 95 since the beginning of 2024 almost. So not a whole lot happening in the uranium space like there was the six months prior when I was really following it closely. We're also seeing sort of the same thing in lithium. We saw a small bump here at the beginning of 2024, but we're basically trading flat for the last, let's call it six months. When it comes to earnings this week though, it's gonna be a quiet week. We've got a holiday on Wednesday in the United States. We've got a couple of companies reporting, but by no means are we in the middle of an earnings season right now. When it comes to market conditions, couple of things that you wanna keep an eye on. Number one, if you live in Canada, we just had our first rate cut, so it's gonna be really interesting to see what happens with inflation over the next six months. I don't expect another cut to come right away. I expect them to pause it at least once and then maybe cut again after that. I think it's gonna be a very, very gradual decrease in interest rates here in Canada. The US Fed decided to hold their interest rates steady last week, meaning that they're going to see higher rates for longer. And it's primarily because US inflation came in at 3.3%, which is above their target of 2%. So until we see a clear path to 2% inflation in the United States, I do think that we are going to continue to see that rate hold steady or at, at most see one or two cuts. I don't think it's going to be a dramatic cut in interest rates and I don't think it's gonna happen consecutively one meeting after the other. We are currently seeing some strong labor markets in both Canada and the United States, but overall the markets continue to be dominated by big tech and artificial intelligence companies. So if you had somewhere to put your money a year ago, that's where you would have wanted to put it. Now what we're trying to do is figure out what is next, where are we putting our money next, and where do we want to go. For me, one section that I've really liked recently has been renewable energy. I have made several videos about Brookfield Renewables. I bought into the company at right around $31, $32. I just got out recently at $42 here because we are hitting some resistance. We're starting to turn around. I made some nice profit on it at 30%. It hasn't done anything in the last two weeks. I'm gonna take my profit. I'm hoping the stock actually comes back down to $30 now so I can buy in again, make the same trade or run it up even higher. If you're interested in seeing when I enter and when I exit trades like this, it is all posted in my Discord chat and on Blossom. Both of the links are in the description to this video. Now, two companies that I like right now. First one is Robinhood. I like Robinhood. As you can see, we had major resistance here around $13. We got rejected once, we got rejected twice, we finally broke through it, and now we are setting consecutively higher highs. What I wanna see, ideally, is I wanna see this price pull back a little bit 
and then I wanna buy in on the bounce. I wanna buy in as this trend continues and I want to take advantage of the direction that the stock is currently going. A couple of things to watch for though, I think a lot of this rally has to do with what's happening with GameStop. So if that story completely dies out, that could be something that could be troubling for this trade or could give me a bit of a headache. So I want to keep an eye on that situation. I want the rally to continue in GameStop. I want the attention to continue. And if it doesn't, or if it crashes quickly, then maybe it's actually a chance to short this back down to support because I do think these two things are fairly tied together. Now, another company that I like here is Snowflake. If you take a look at the financials behind Snowflake, they're not a profitable company yet, but the metrics are getting better. There is a path to profitability and the revenue continues to increase. So as a technology company, I like it. I like the company, I like the fundamentals, I like the, the financials behind it, everything is good. When it comes to the technical side of things, We've got something interesting going on here because we've got some major support at $120. We've basically been trading at this level for two years now. We were at this level in April of 2022. We tested it in 2023. We are back down to it in 2024. And I am looking to buy on the bounce off of $120. If it falls below $120, I probably don't want to touch it because I actually like this company. It's just going to give me better opportunities to buy in, but there's not a whole lot of technical support below $120. So what I'm watching for is at 120, what happens here over the next one to two weeks. If we see confirmation of a bounce, I am a buyer of Snowflake. I like Snowflake. I think they're going to do extremely well. One company that I don't think is going to do very well though, or at least in the short term, I don't think they're going to do very well is Lemonade. As you can see, we've been consolidating for almost seven or eight months right here, continuously bouncing off $15. And on Friday last week, we broke below $15. I think this trend is gonna continue and I'm looking to short it down to $10.50, maybe $11. I'm just looking for a quick trade in and out on Lemonade. The company should do well over the long term. I'm not their biggest fan. I like them, I like the concept. It just comes down to execution from a technical standpoint though. This looks like a great opportunity to make a couple of bucks on the downside. Now, one company I really don't like though that I think is dying out is Foot Locker. I don't think Foot Locker stands a chance to be here 10 years from now. And so what I am looking at on Foot Locker is a double top right here. We got a double top in March and in June, basically at the end of May, beginning of June here, we tested $29. We got rejected both times. The stock continues to climb lower. I'm expecting it to go down to $21 and long term, I'm expecting it to go down even further. And so I don't necessarily like buying or, uh, or shorting the stock because it has huge risk to it, especially if they put out a good earnings release or some major piece of news. But what I am considering doing is buying some long term put options in Foot Locker so that if it decreases, I am making money and I don't have that unlimited risk factor that I would have if I was shorting the stock. So that is my plan with Foot Locker. If you're interested in learning any more about that, whether it's how to trade the stock market or how to understand options, all of my content is totally free on Skillshare. That's where I put together basically step-by-step -step courses that you can access for free for one month. All you have to do is sign up with the link in the description down below and it will take you there. You get access to all of my courses totally free. Cancel within one month and you won't have to pay a penny. I promise you it'll be the best free resource you can find online. There's over 20,000 students that have gone through the courses and I will see you there. Thank you so much for watching and we'll talk to you soon.